Are you ready to jump into the Word? Show me your Bible if you brought it with you this morning. Wave it at me. Where is it? Awesome. You have your digital Bible. Got it with you? Hopefully, you've got our app downloaded. You can follow along uh, there. I want to welcome those of you that are joining us online. Would you put your hands together? Welcome our online church family. Glad you're here. Awesome. Hopefully, you can join us in the room. I've been sitting down the last couple of weeks, and I'm going to be honest with you. Me like it. <laughs> me like it a lot. I, I, I'm, not, I'm a lot less tired, but uh, uh, I, I feel like I just want to have another conversation with you today just about the fruits that we're looking at and going through in Scripture. And so I hope you're okay. We're just going to sit down again and just have a conversation about this fruit. Um, we are in a series called Fruition. And uh, fruition literally is the act of bearing fruit. I said in week number one, and I've tried to remind you over the course of this series, that fruitfulness is a big deal to God. So fruitfulness should, in fact, be a big deal to us. Would you agree? And so if that's the case, these verses that we're reading together in Galatians chapter 5 that Paul wrote are so powerful. And so I want to read them with you again, if you don't mind. And let's just focus in today, because today we're going to talk about the fruit of, you're going to love it, kindness. Right. Kindness. So let's read together um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 in the ESV. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is, let's read it together, ready? Love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law. What Paul is doing here is Paul is showing us that these fruits of the, not just the a spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, he's showing us that these fruits are the markings of, of a follower of Christ's life. And that's a powerful thought. In other words, it, 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 it's, it really, if, you, if you'd like to describe it this way, it, it's what a Christian's character should look like. These fruits of the Spirit. Now, when, um, when we're full of the Holy Spirit and we're led by the Holy Spirit, what, what I think, what Paul is trying to say is that these things should be visible to other people in our lives. They should see these things. It should be tangible. Amen? Amen? So the way we live and the way we behave, listen to me, as followers of Christ, should look different than the world. Agreed. And I realize some of you here, you're maybe not a Christian. You, you um, haven't studied God's Word. I mean, we open God's Word every week. We look at God's word closely and, 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 and because we know they're powerful words that can change our lives and transform us. But we believe every word of the Bible, everybody. I heard somebody say the other day that churches aren't supposed to be political. Well, you can't really be political if you don't open the Bible and said, God created them male and female. That's not political. That's biblical. And so it may be controversial, but it's biblical. And so what I'm trying to get us to see is this, that these fruits should be visible in our lives to people who don't know Christ. Now, that word in the Greek, and I've tried to do this uh, as I've been with you, that word in the Greek, that word kindness is krostestas, krostestas. And it means, look at it, moral goodness, integrity, kindness, excellence in character or demeanor, good and I like, this, I like this version. In fact, this version may be the most impactful one, especially in light of how it's used in Scripture. It means to make oneself useful to another or a kind act. Pretty, pretty straightforward, right? So here's a question. Have you ever met anyone in your life that just didn't want to be treated with kindness? It's a rare thing. Most people I know, as hateful as they are, as unkind as they are, they want to be treated with kindness. Am I right? It's very rare that you find a person, no matter how mean and nasty. I met a guy one, name, one day, his name was Filthy McNasty. I did, didn't I, Tracy? I met a guy named Filthy McNasty, and he still wanted to be treated kindly. So here's the, here's the issue, I think, okay? Just for, for the sake of conversation. And as we move through this, I mean, I, I hope my prayer is that we really learn and grow in the fruit of kindness today. It really is. 
But my, my thought is that people in the world are skeptical of kindness. People in the world are skeptical of kindness. And let me tell you why. Kindness is so rare in our culture that people are skeptical of it. They question kindness because it's such a rarity. And so I read something this week. I don't have it for you to put it on the screen, but I want to read you. I read something in an article this week I thought was interesting, and it said what kindness is. It's just a few things. Kindness is, here, here's some things for thought. Kindness is giving someone the benefit of the doubt when they don't deserve it. Kindness is being generous with your resources, your time, your money, your skills, and your stuff to someone when it doesn't benefit you at all. It's taking someone at their word. Kindness is a heart that's delighted when good things happen to other people and they don't happen to you. Uh-oh, I hit a nerve. <laughs> Kindness is a spirit of generosity in all things. A pastor said this one time, it made sense to me. Kindness is loaning someone your strength instead of reminding them of their weakness. Let that hit you for a second. <laughs> Kindness is loaning someone your strength instead of reminding them of their weakness. Paul said this also in Colossians 3. Look at this verse. Colossians 3.12. Therefore, as, God chose, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, look at this word, clothe. <laughs> clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So I want to show you quickly three things about kindness, and then I want to I want to close out by just talking with you and showing you a couple of other principles of how I really believe that we can grow in the fruit of kindness. The first one's very obvious. Obviously, we're in this series, and, but, but, but I think we need to talk about it because it's true. So jot this down if you're taking notes. Uh, the first one is kindness is a fruit, all right? Obviously, this is fruition. That's not mind-blowing to you, right? Galatians 5.22, look at it again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. How many of you like Chick-fil-A? Love me some Christian chicken. <laughs> my dad, for many years, uh, my dad's group Truth, back literally in the like, late 70s, early 80s, when the Cathy's were starting uh, Chick-fil-A, Truth got into a relationship with him. My dad was able to, to be friends with and be around the Cathy family and, and a lot of their leadership and, and of course, all of their, their, their owners and operators and partners uh, down through the years. And my dad was always, would always come away from these, these gatherings and just say, I can't believe these people are amazing people. I mean, they're so kind, they're so generous, they're so amazing, and, and, and it shows up in their chicken. <laughs> it also shows up in their 16-year-olds working at the drive-thru. My pleasure. How many of y'all have been shocked by how nice a 16-year-old, no offense, 16-year-olds, but it's not every day that they're like, how can I serve you? My pleasure. Thank you for being here today. But what I've learned over time, and here's where I want to draw the comparison because I think it's, it's, it's important for us to do this. Listen, you can train someone to say, my pleasure. <laughs> you can train someone to smile and say thank you. But what I want you to understand is that many times training can go in one ear and out the other. Okay? Now, stay with me here. Just because someone is trained to be nice doesn't mean they have a kind heart. Do you see where I'm going? Okay. There's a difference between being nice and being kind. Listen, parents, you can train your kids to be nice. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. And you know they're, they're, what they're thinking is, hey, you, you're dumb. <laughs> right? Right? We live in a part of the country that, in the South, people are shocked, shocked when, you, when people from the South go into other parts of the country, at the, the yes ma'am and the no ma'am and the yes sir and the no sir. People are like, oh my gosh, that, that is amazing. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, you can train a child to be nice, but kindness, listen to me, kindness comes from a transformed heart. There's a difference. There's a difference between training someone to be nice and kindness flowing supernaturally out of a changed, saved, come on, spirit-filled heart. There's a difference. And when we have an encounter with God, some of you have already had an encounter with God today here in this room. 
When you have an encounter with God, our hearts are transformed and they're never the same. And, and listen, I get it. You know, if, if you know anything about agriculture, some fruit takes longer to grow. Okay? And maybe for you, you're just like, no, it's not my natural inclination. Yeah, I can be nice, but I'm just not sure kindness. Listen, I get it. Some fruit takes time. But I'm going to put a greenhouse effect on your kindness today. And we're going to grow in kindness together. But kindness has to be more than a smile. It has to be more, more than a nod. It has to be more than a wave or a my pleasure. Kindness comes from within, out of a heart that God is continually shaping, molding, changing and transforming. It's called sanctification. Yeah. It happens over time. Yeah. That's a big word, but it's a powerful thing because that's what God is doing. He is growing us out of a transformed heart. So kindness is a fruit. Here's the second one. Kindness is an attribute of God. Kindness is an attribute of God. If you do a word search in the Bible, especially if you do a word search on kindness in the Old Testament, you will see many times the word kindness is paired with the word justice. Which, for some of us, you might go, justice and kindness? Kindness and justice? Those don't seem really to go together. In fact, if you know a just person, (laughs) how many of you know some just people? Like, just people are like, they're about what's right. They are black and white, good and bad, evil and, come on, you know what I'm saying? They're just like, and and really, they they don't even care about how justice impacts a person. They're just about what's right. Then you've got someone who's just kind. They're just kind. You've been around these people, right? And they're so concerned about people's feelings and emotions and, and how in light of justice, how is this going to impact this person? But you know what's interesting about God? God is both kind and just. And you see that. Now, um, look at this in, in the Old Testament, Hosea 12, 6. Therefore, and by the way, I learned this in Bible school. It cost me a lot of money. When you ever see the word therefore in the Bible... You need to stop and know what it's there for. I'm giving, that's a little free, there's a freebie for you right there. It says, therefore, return to your God. Observe kindness and justice and wait for your God continually. Look at Micah, 8, Micah 6, 8, ESV. He has told you, old man, not old man, yeah. old man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? You know this, but to do justice. To love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. But if you do a word search of kindness in the New Testament, you will sometimes see the word kindness in the New Testament paired with love. Or to be more specific, kindness and God's love. And I think that's so interesting. And here's why. Listen to this. Listen very carefully. God's wrath toward sin was satisfied with Jesus on the cross. He said three words from the cross. It is finished. He did a complete work for you and for me. Jesus paid the price for our sin. Justice was served in Jesus. And we see this Kindness now is, is, is paired with God's love. And we, we now experience God's great kindness through the sacrifice of Jesus. Such a powerful thought. So Titus, if you move to the New Testament, Titus 3, verse 4 and 5 says this, But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of righteous things we'd done, but because of his mercy. God is just God is love and God is kindness. Here's the third one. Kindness is an action. Kindness is an action. There, listen to me. There should be times in the life of a follower of Christ throughout our day where we are hearing God's voice, full of the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, and we're making a difference in the lives of other people when it doesn't benefit us. That is God's kindness. There should be, I mean, Paul's saying these things should be hallmarks of a Christian's life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. All those things should be a hallmark. They should be characteristics of our lives. I mean, Paul even wrote about it. Paul, he wrote about, uh, he was shipwrecked on an island. Look at this in Acts 28. 
Acts 28 verse 2, Paul said, The native people showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and welcomed us all because it had begun to rain and it was cold. This is tangible. It could be seen. It was an action. It was written about. Pastor Tracy and I have not been alone in our house for 31 years. And we were this weekend. In fact, we, all of a sudden we were like, I looked at her, she looked at me, and I was like, do you hear that? And she was like, no. I was like, exactly. It was quiet. And we didn't want to go anywhere. We didn't want to do anything. We just wanted to sit there for a minute. We were, we were able to do whatever we want, to watch whatever we want, to eat whatever we want. And so I'm just going to pat myself on the back for a minute. I told Pastor Tracy, I'm going to cook you a steak. But you want to really love on somebody? Build them a fire. Paul said, they built me a fire. So I, I fired up the grill. I got two steaks out. I, I fired up the, the, the fire pit in the backyard. Man, we were eating and the breeze was blowing. And I mean, it was amazing. And I, but, I, but I noticed after a while that the smoke was bothering her eyes. It was bothering her nose. I, did y'all notice one of the couple of evenings this week has been very windy. And so it was just kind of moving that smoke around. So, I mean, I love a fire. She typically does too. But the fire was bothering her. So... You know what I did? I snuffed out my fire so the smoke wouldn't bother her anymore. I could have sat there all night, but I didn't. There was more fire later. You know what's another act of kindness? You know what another tangible act of kindness is in our church family? Small group leaders, people that serve on our go team, people that pray for you, people that take care of your kids, people that make sure the coffee's hot or cold in, in this case today. In fact, if you've ever, if you have ever led a small group or you're leading a small group this semester or you are serving on a go team, or you have served on a go team at one time, would you do me a favor? I don't always do this. Would you stand up? If you've ever done that in a church, stand, just stand up for a minute. If you've ever done any of those things in, that church, in our church, just stand up. Now, li- now listen to me. Yeah. Now listen to me for a second. What you do and what you've done and what you'll continue to do in our church is an act of God's kindness. You can sit down. In fact, what I'd encourage you to do there are going to be people in our church today that they're going to walk out of this service and go out to that area to try to find a small group. If, you, if you're leading a small group in this semester or if you've led a small group before and you have a passion for seeing people get connected or you were serving on a team or you lead a team and you need people serving on your team, I want to encourage you to make your way out between services to the small group area because there are people in our, in our church that they, they need some kindness in their life. They need somebody to love on them. In fact, if you'll stand up, Will, Will is uh, part of our team. He's going to be out front just kind of coordinating the launch today. And he wore a sexy white coat, which yeah. he's easy to, easy to find. But Will wants to help you, and our leaders want to help you get connected in a small group. But it is an act of kindness when you serve. And I'm thankful. Tracy and I are very thankful for the hundreds of people, literally the hundreds of people, to make everything we do on the weekends and throughout the week possible. There's families that took time off work to go to youth camp just to love on kids. And I'm very grateful. Very, very grateful. You know, I had a conversation this week, and, and I had an opportunity to not be kind. Have you ever had a conversation and you realized pretty quickly you had an oppor- opportunity to not be kind? And, you know, you can't always control what comes at you, but you can control how you respond to it. And Pastor Tracy's told me for years, John, you get more with honey than you do with vinegar. How many of you ever heard that? Kindness goes a long, long, and I'm not talking about, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I'm talking about kindness out of a transformed heart. Like your heart is moved with compassion for other people. There's a difference. There's a difference. And and, and listen to me. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we deserved it the least and needed it the most, he came. Amen, everybody? 
Matthew 15, verse 10 and 11, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen and understand. What goes into, what goes into someone's mouth doesn't defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, this is what defiles them. Jesus was saying what I just said a moment ago. He was saying, it's not the stuff coming at you that defiles you. It's the stuff coming out of you that defiles you. You know, when there's a lesson to be learned for all of us throughout our lives, throughout the day. You know, when you get around people that you struggle to be kind to, like people that you struggle to get along with, maybe even you might go as far as to say, I don't really like that person. Let me tell you something. When you, when you extend kindness or, where, or, or when you struggle to extend kindness, it could be a teaching moment in your heart and in your life. That maybe this is an opportunity to turn the tables and flip the script. Like I have an opportunity here to learn a lesson and grow a little bit in my heart and out of a transformed heart, I'm going to love on this person. I wouldn't typically do that because I don't really, how many of you know, you can like people and not, or you can love people and not like them. Does that, you understand what I mean, right? It shows us there's still some fruit that God's developing in our lives. It's a powerful, powerful thing. So here's what I want to do for the next few minutes. I want to give you three quick principles. And these three quick, pr quick principles, you can jot them down if you want to take some notes. And, and, and what I want, the statement that I want to complete in these, in these principles is simply this. I can be a kind person by, here's number one, jot this down, by experiencing God's kindness myself. You can be a kind person, but you've got to experience God's kindness for yourself. I grew up in a Christian home. I grew up in a, in a family that went to church every time the doors were open, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, vacation Bible school, GAs, RAs. I didn't go to GAs. I went to RAs, but we were always trying to figure out where the GA class was. <laughs> or maybe you went to Missionettes and Royal Rangers, or I don't know how you grew up, whatever your flow was. I knew all the Bible stories. I went to Sunday school every, every Sunday. I had my envelopes, and I brought my offering. But, but if you had asked me in my life at that point how God felt about me, I probably would have said, he's angry at me. I fear him not in a healthy way. He's probably not pleased or very disappointed in my life. And it wasn't until the summer of 1984, between my junior and senior year in high school, when I stopped just going to church and God transformed my heart. And there was a difference. And I knew it. I could tell it. It was, it was, it was something that, that changed in my heart. It changed in my heart, not only internally, but toward other people. And it also changed in how I, I viewed God and how I knew that God viewed me. And it was a transformative moment in my life. Romans 2, 4 says this, Or do you show contempt for the richness of his kindness, forbearance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? Listen to me today. God is pursuing you right now. God loves you right now. God's will and his way and his purpose and his dream for you, that you would come into relationship with him, that you would know how much he loves you, how much he wants to forgive you. He's not mad at you, even though you have messed up so bad, as we all have. But God passionately loves you, and he's pursuing you today. With what? His loving kindness. He, he sent his son, Jesus, to the cross for you and for me. Man, you talk about kindness. Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Deuteronomy 7.9, know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to a thousand generation with those who love him and keep his commandments. Sometimes we struggle to grasp the love that God has for us. And you may be struggling with that today. You may have struggled with that in your life, that God really loves you. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of person that can't wait to give somebody a present. Are you? Is that you? I mean, you ask Pastor Tracy or you ask our kids. One of my kids is like that. They inherited it from me. And they're always like, I don't care if it's Christmas, birthday, Father's Day, whatever. They're like, I got it for you. Open it. It's open. Can you open it? You want to open it? I mean, it's like days before the day. And they're just like, come on, 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 come on. And you're like, oh, gosh. But then I'm like, they're acting just like me. 
Normally I wait to the end of service to do this, but I can't wait. Here's what I want you to understand. Jesus died for you. God loves you. You may be struggling with that today, but you need to know something so powerful that God loves you, he's pursuing you, he wants to be in relationship with you, and it's all about his loving kindness. I don't care how messed up your life is and how jacked up you are or you feel or you sense what you're going through is just too much for God. Can I tell you something? Is not. So here's what I want everybody to do for just a moment. Bow your heads and close your eyes. If you're here today and you have no relationship with God, are you feeling somehow you, you've fallen out of relationship with God today? I want you to know something. God is here, he loves you, and you can connect with him right now. How do you do that? Pastor John, how do I do that? By just simply calling out to him, asking him. With every head bowed and every eye closed, watching online, don't, don't go away, don't turn this stream off. Listen to me. You can respond to God's love right now. How do I do that, Pastor John? Well, here's what we're going to do. In just a moment, if you're here today and you sense in your heart that you don't know God or you you need to invite God back into your life and your heart, I want to lead you in a simple commitment prayer. We're going to pray it all together all over the room. But with your heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here and you know you have no relationship with God or you're ready to get back into relationship with him today, I'm going to count to three. And if it's you, I want you to lift your hand, leave it up till I see it. Nobody else is looking around, just me. Are you ready? One, two, three. Three, lift your hand. Hold it up really high all over the building for just a moment, would you? Everybody, yes, thank you, thank you. Online, hit that button. Hold it up for just another moment so I can see you. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. You can put your hands down. Now, I want everybody in this room to repeat this prayer after me from your heart. Just say, God, thank you for loving me. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I believe that you're God's son. I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for extending your loving kindness to me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, give the the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. How else can we be kind? And don't worry, I'm going to tell you what to do about that decision in a few minutes, but how else can we be kind? Number two, by extending God's kindness to myself. (laughs) What? By extending God's kindness to myself. Would you agree that you're your worst critic? (laughs) Think about the internal conversation. We talked about it earlier just a moment ago. That playlist that goes off in your mind at night or when you are confronted with something, you you always do this, you never do that. You're, You're too young, you're too old, you're too... you're you're from that family. Come on. It's that playlist that goes off in your head. You're so dumb. Wow. (laughs) You're so stupid. No wonder you failed. No wonder you messed it up. But here's the thing. The more that you have that playlist going off in your head and the more you speak those things to yourself, the more likely you are to speak those things to someone else and over someone else. The more... The more likely I am to speak those things about myself and about you. But look at this in Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2 verse 4 says this, But because of his great love for us, God, who rich in mercy made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace that you've been saved by faith. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order, here we go, that in the coming ages he might show his, the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Big verse, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Listen to me. We can be so performance-based in our lives. We can be so performance-based in our jobs. I gotta do this more. I gotta do more, do more, do more. We can be so performance-based in our marriage. Well, if I do that, she'll do that. If he does this, I'll do that. We can be so performance-based in our relationships and even in our relationship with God. Oh, it's gotta sin less. I'm gonna sin less. (laughs) How many times have you had that conversation with yourself? Why do I keep doing this, right? We get so performance 
based. In many areas of our lives, we attach this performance to success. And it'll bleed into our lives. And if we're not careful, we'll do it in our relationship with God. And we just read it. It's by grace, <laughs> not by us. We, we, we don't bring anything. Come on. We, it's never been about what we bring to the table. It's always been about what God brought to the table. We just get to have a seat at the table. And that's a blessing. Why? Because of his loving kindness. God is my only hope. God, you're my only hope. <laughs> Thank you for your loving kindness. Here's the third one. How can I be more kind? By expressing God's kindness to others. <laughs> Remember I told you kindness is an action. Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind to one another. That's pretty, that's pretty straight up. Be kind to one another. Look at Philippians 4.5. This is the disciples' literal New Testament translation. It says, let your kindness be known to all people. That sounds outward, doesn't it? That sounds obvious. It sounds visible. It sounds like a fruit. And I said this earlier, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna reference it again. Fruit is not for you. An apple tree doesn't grow apples for itself. They grow the fruit for others. Amen, everybody? It should be something that kindness should be felt, seen, expressed, spoken. Kindness is a fruit that grows from within, but the Bible also tells us, we read it just a few moments ago, to clothe yourself. To clothe yourself with kindness. Clothing yourself with kindness doesn't always mean all the circumstances are right. But by clothing yourself with kindness and, and having kindness come out of a transformed heart, it, everything may not be right, but you can make it right. How? By your response. By extending kindness. We're not perfect people. I'm not saying you gotta be perfect. Get that, that's the enemy. You don't have to be perfect, you just gotta be kind. And we've gotta grow in kindness. Don't we wanna be people that are marked by God's loving kindness? Listen, everybody, when, when, when you walk out the doors of this church or you, you leave your home or you, you walk into your job or to the classroom or, or wherever you go, listen, you, you, you may hear this, and they may say this about our church. Ah, I don't agree with everything that's going on over there. That music's loud. That smoke's weird. Those lights are crazy. But they're the kindest people I've ever been around in my life. Come on, y'all. Let that be said of us. Let what's coming out of our heart, come on, you can, say, you can say a hard thing in a kind way. The Bible says to speak the truth in love. Did I talk about controversial already? I mean, y'all, there's a lot of controversial things going on in the world right now. I, I, I heard a pastor say this. Did I already say this in the service? I don't know if I did or not. I can't remember. I heard a pastor say this this week. People are like, the church shouldn't be so controversial. The church shouldn't be political. And I'm like, well, if you open the Bible and you read God created them, man and woman, I mean, I, th I think I said that to you earlier. I mean, that's not political, it's scriptural. Can you tell you something? That's God's loving kindness. I mean, you can correct people with God's loving kindness. Let me show you what the Bible says. Let me tell you what I believe. Let me tell you how God changed my heart. Let me tell you how I can, even people that are different from me, I can reach out to them with loving kindness, but still speak the truth. It's a powerful thing. I don't agree with everything that they do, but man, I tell you what, that's the kindest person I've ever been around in my life. It's the kindness of God, the goodness of God. Come on, that leads people to repentance, everybody. Remember, I told you last week, it's not like, come here, let me hit you in the head with this Bible. Come here, Whack, you know? That's what some Christians do. Can I tell you something? People don't respond to judging. They respond to love. <laughs> love them into the kingdom. So if you are here and you prayed that prayer earlier, I wanna show you a scripture. Show us this last scripture that we always show in Romans. Earlier when you prayed that prayer, you, you, you confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You believed in your heart who he was and you declared that as you said that simple prayer and you made that decision or you recommitted your life. Now you've got to tell somebody 
I mean, you can leave today and join a small group or join a team or talk to our connect group or you can come next door to next steps immediately following this service. Be water baptized. You, you got to take some next steps, everybody. Show them the next steps real quick. They're very easy. You can text the word next to 34153 if you don't want to talk to anybody, which is totally fine. We'll send you a video, some resources, but don't miss an opportunity to have somebody pray for you, to answer a question, to join a team, to join a small group, to get connected. Hey, you want to be kind? Get around kind people. You want to be godly? Get around godly people. You want to be around faith? You want to be a faith-filled person? Get around faith-filled people. Amen, everybody? It'll make a difference in your life. So I want you to stand up on your feet. Band, you can go ahead and come. I want to pray for you today. And then I want you to go out and hang out a little bit and, and, and find a small group, find some people to do life with. We're going to have a great time at First Wednesday, too. It's going to be awesome. The students are going to be here. We do baptism, so don't, don't miss that. But can I pray for you? And then uh, I'll let you go. Father, I thank you that we have a unique opportunity in the season, the world that we live in, God, that is so divided, that is so controversial. God, God that we can respond in a spiritual way in your loving kindness, God, that leads people to repentance. Father, I pray and I declare over our church today, God, that we are growing in love, that we are growing in patience, that we are growing in joy, that we are growing in kindness, that we are growing in gentleness, that we're growing in all these areas, Father, even in self-control. Father, I'm just declaring we are going to grow to be supernaturally kind in the moments to come. Lord, let it be said of our lives, those are the kindest people I've ever been around in my life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Do you receive that today? Amen, everybody. Are you glad you came to church? All right, come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise one more time. Amen? Isn't God good? All right, everybody, God bless you. We'll see you first Wednesday. Go out and join a small group. God bless you. You're dismissed.